everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Zara Survival. In the last episode, we made this incredible kangaroo exhibit, and in this episode, we're going to do a whole lot more building. Remember to subscribe and like the video, and stay tuned for more content. Alright, so let's jump straight into the video. So, before I start this episode, I just wanted to ask any fellow Minecrafters out there if they had done the migration to Microsoft accounts. I have, and I've got this slick new cape. I just wanted, I was just wondering whether anyone else had done the migration yet. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So for this video, I think we're mainly going to focus on this gorilla enclosure, since it's the only one left of the five that we've already done. So, yeah, this is what we're going to do, but I think we're also going to do a couple of other things in here. Like just spice up this area around, and just put some leaves and bushes and things like that in, just to give it a bit of life. And we'll do some other things as well. So, now we've got the plan, let's roll this into action. Let's play the time lapse. <music> to clear out the water, I'm going to actually use some sponges I found in that sea temple we found a couple of episodes ago. So that will make it a ton more easier to clear this out. I'm also thinking about clearing the water out underneath here as well, since this is only a thin layer over the top of the enclosures. Okay, so I'm just going to get to placing the sponges. Don't actually know if this is going to work or not. This enclosure is massive. It's a lot bigger than the others, and it's going to leave a lot more effort. But yeah, it's huge! Now, just to break up the huge amount of building we're doing, we're actually going to go and see Pathrick Zoo. So, let's see if we can just TP over to him. And here we are at Pathrick Zoo. And already some very nice first impressions. I love the palm trees everywhere. Okay, so, lead on. Sorry about the lag here. Okay, so, down into the cave. Ooh, some rattlesnakes. Very nice design for the enclosure. Ooh, we've got some Komodo dragons. Got some more, got some dwarf crocodiles up there. Some marine iguanas. I love it down here. It's very nice. I like the open feel to it. Yeah, again, I apologise about the lag. There's nothing really I can do about it. What's in here? Oh, some pangolins! We made a pangolin exhibit. Now, I actually really like the design of this. Now, what's in here? Hmm. Can't really tell. I think it might be a baby hippopotamus. Oh no, it's a chimpanzee! From a suggestion in the comments, I think we might make a chimpanzee enclosure. But what's up here? Oh, so this is an otter enclosure. I can't see them, but they must be over the back. Actually, there's one up there. Oh yeah, I see it. Oh, meerkats, we also made one of these. There's some animals which seem to be very common. And I see one just up there. And what's over here? Is this a grizzly bear enclosure? I think it might be. Oh, it's bears and moose. Oh, it's a very nice exhibit. I love the variation. And the spruce trees do it justice. Now, what's in this dome? Into the dome we go. Oh, it's a bird enclosure. Some nice birds in here. I like the cherry tree in the middle. Gives it a nice colour. Some cockatoos. No, some macaws. There's some macaws and cockatoos and toucans. This is really nice. A hippo enclosure. This is really nice. You can see them just there. Oh, and tapirs. No, that's not a hippo. That's a tapir. Wonder where the hippos are. 
Ah, here's the hippos. Ah, just there. Cool. I really like how he's done used the mangrove trees. It looks really nice in this enclosure. And in here is the gorilla enclosure. And we're making this one this episode. I actually think we might take some inspiration and do some like hanging things above it. Just to give it a bit of detail. But yeah, some gorillas. I really like this enclosure. So, anything else? And so here's another area of Pathrits. Oh my goodness me! He's caught an Enderman! How? Crikey! That was close. So the reason why I'm so shocked is because the thing is, hostile mobs can't spawn on this server. Just because of the mob cap created by all the zoo animals. They just are extremely, extremely rare. So the fact that he's got an Enderman and a Creeper is astonishing. Anyway, back to the video. So, thank you, Patrick, so much for letting me look around your zoo. Greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. But now, we've got to get back to building the gorilla exhibit. So now that we've had that lovely tour around Patrick's zoo, I guess we should do what we always do when we're making a new enclosure. We're going to finish up the wall with some cobblestone bricks, and we're just going to do some terraforming. Though I don't actually think there's going to need to be much terraforming, because there's always been the, there's the bed of the river here, which got sponged out, and it's already created a nice slope which we can build on. So, let's jump straight into another time lapse. Again. away these clay patches, turn it all to grass, and then we can start on the details. So now that we've put the grass in and we've cleaned up the ground, I think we should probably start putting the details in that will make this a natural gorilla exhibit. For instance, I'm thinking we might put some pillars in here, which we can hang ropes and things off. Just put a bit of detail in. For instance, like that. And then we can put in some of these details on it. And just smooth it out a bit. And just like that, we have a good looking support pillar. I'm thinking we might put three of these around, and then we'll put some hanging ropes between them. I've also got some things to make some rocks, and some bushes, and things like that, which we can spread around. And then we'll do the ground cover, and all the extra details that we can do. Alright? So, I'm just going to get on and do this, and we might jump into a time lapse. Okay, so let's go! <laughs> footage of me putting in the rocks and the leaves and a couple of extra balance beams. 
the footage that I lost was actually really good, but it's gone now, so, yeah. But apart from doing all this and making the ground look nice, I also made a statue just over here if I can get over there. I made this statue. It's meant to look a bit like a gorilla, but I'm not sure if it does. But yeah, it's a bit of a statue just to fill in this empty space here. So now that the enclosure, the decoration is done, I think we should probably get to doing the ground area because I think for it, I think we're going to mix in some podzol, some coarse dirt and then put in some leaves and grass and things like that just to give it a bit more depth and just to make it look a bit more natural. So the process that I go through when I'm trying to put the fine details into a build is I basically just fill up my entire inventory with a ton of good stuff which I can put in and then I can say put the ground in first and I'll take some podzol and just break some blocks and just place it down and I'll do this quite a few more times just until I've got a nice spread of it over the entire enclosure Just like that. And now you can come in with your other ground block. Mine is coarse dirt. And if you just put in it in your offhand, it's easier. And you can just come around and switch out some of those blocks which you've just put in with that block. You can also put it in small patches on its own. But mainly try and put it where you put those blocks before. Because then that gives a bit of depth and detail to it. Which can also bring the build to life. So I'm just putting it here. And if you actually put, say, coaster in by the base of a tree, it'll look like it's not grown there. And it's just been kept untidy at the bottom of the tree. And you can just spread this out nice and evenly again, like the other ground block. And already, just like that, it's given the whole exhibit a nice sense of detail, as well, of course, as the other things around it. But that just added on top of a bland plate. This actually gives it a bit of depth and detail. You can see as well that I may have accidentally clicked and made a path block as well. But in fact, that just gives it a bit more level and shape. So now, usually, I'll come in and just place down some of these grasses and ferns and things like that for instance this eucalyptus tree might be quite nice behind this pole and you can sort of scatter these around how you like but just think about it how it would naturally be they wouldn't be everywhere they'd sort of be spaced out and not carefully i wouldn't say but you would put them in places where they would naturally grow and then you can come in with the other plants. Just place these down. It's quite good if they match well with the landscape. For instance, the eucalyptus and ostrich ferns. They sort of work with the grass and they don't clash too heavily. Remember to get some plants at the back of your exhibit because that's usually where things get forgotten. And then if you also just get one plant, just one plant with one colour, and every time you place it down, it'll give it that one bright spot of colour. And that one bright spot of colour will catch and draw the eye. Allowing you to sort of position where people will look in your exhibit. For instance, I've got one there and one down there. And then if I place one just here, that will mean that their eyes are sort of drawn to the middle area of this exhibit. Which will probably be where most of the gorillas are. And then you can just come in with the basic things. Just placing down a bit of grass, just to fill in the empty gap. You can also come in with some smaller things, rather than these sort of high items. You can come in with some which really stay close to the ground, but they just give it a bit of colour. Not that the brown gives give it much colour, but it just gives it a bit of detail.
So now it's gone from looking like this to looking like this. And I think that's a huge improvement. Now to do the basic things like putting the railings in, putting some benches in, and then we can put the gorillas in. Now that everything's in and the whole enclosure is set up, we can now start to add the Western Lowland Gorillas. So I've got eight of them here from my collection and we're just going to add them in. Two there. Another two. And the last two I'm going to put up on the frames. And now all the frames are in. And I think they actually look really good in their enclosure. So now, somehow, the end of the episode has managed to sneak up on us. Even though we were planning to do some extra things and just spice up this area with some leaves and plants and details, we haven't managed to get round to doing that this episode. But we'll get straight on to it next episode. But in the meantime, we have managed to do this incredible gorilla exhibit. I'll explain to you how I put the paintings in it. And we've also visited Pathrick Zoo. So yeah, the end of the episode. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.